What's up, love bugs? It's your girl, Belle. Happy Tuesday. This is going to be my random chatterbox vlog. Um, I really don't have much to talk about. There's a few things I want to talk about. So I'm just going to touch on those and see what everybody else is talking about today. Um, I decided what I'm going to do is... Um, Friday, I'm going to do my um, News Flash Friday, so that's where I'm going to talk about everything that's going, in the, going on in the news locally, worldwide, and other news, stuff that's on the news. Football season is almost over with. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do, because that's the only thing I really watch. So, that's almost over, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be plenty of things in the news to talk about. So, Friday's going to be my um, News Flash Friday. And on Saturdays, I'm going to do my What You Watching. That's where I um, review all the shows that I'm watching. Um, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to drop Love and Hip Hop because I can't deal with it. it my nerves are too bad. Um... So I'm going to probably replace that with um, Celebrity Apprentice, which is good. I cannot wait to see Vivica Fox and Kenya Moore go at it. Oh my God, I can't wait. So I think I'm going to substitute that for the other. Um, so let's just get into this chatter box, right? So um, I'm not going to talk about the episode but a lot of people on Monday where well, I saw on the blogs and stuff like that a lot of people were upset that um Nene called Claudia half breed. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying you know it's wrong. But my question is when did we as not just a people but when did we become so sensitive to words? I remember when I was growing up the only thing that can get me riled up and ready to fight you is if you said something about my mom. That's the only thing that you could really get under my skin with. But nowadays, everything is so sensitive. We're raising our children to be hella sensitive. That's why we, I mean, we're raising some sensitive motherfuckers. I'm serious. I'm, I'm sorry. But the kids today are extremely sensitive and temperamental. That could be because the parents are getting younger and younger and the grandparents are getting younger and younger but we are raising some sensitive kids and we're becoming a sensitive nation to the point where I mean you really couldn't do or say anything about us that could really get us riled up unless you like physically attacked us that's the only way we'll get riled up but now we're getting overly sensitive about words I mean I understand some words yeah you should be sensitive about I mean okay nigga I say that word a lot but it's never I, it, there's no just okay there's no justification for it because I was about to say it's not in a in a derogatory way because when we're when I'm around my friends you know nigga please nigga you tried it we do things like that I'm not going to say I'm going to stop saying the word because I'll be lying to y'all. I'm I I can scale back as much as possible, but when you come accustomed to saying things that's like saying the is in and, and, I mean, you kind of say it without even thinking about it. I mean, that's one of the things I decided this year to scale back from saying the N word. In some words I don't allow around me, like I don't I don't like the word faggot. That drives me crazy. My mom can tell you. Everybody around me can tell you that I don't like the word faggot. That drives me crazy. I think that is the most top words I don't like. Faggot, dyke, dick, and pussy. Those are the four words that I, that I cringe when I hear. I cannot deal with those words. Please find another word because I can't deal with those find any other word to deal with but those are words that I can understand and nigger that's another word 
honestly, I've only come in contact with being called that one time in my life. And I was not even in Louisiana. I was actually in Arkansas. It was after Katrina. And I was so not expecting him to say it. It was an older white man. And he said, thank you, nigga. Like, that was the name on my name tag where I was working at the time. And the guy that worked with me, he was gay. And he looked at me like, oh, shit, she about to jump over this counter. But it took a minute for me to register what he actually said. And I had to turn and ask him. I was like, did he say what I think he said? And his response was, I was, I was shocked that you didn't jump over the counter. So I was like, I had never experienced it. So I didn't. That was my reaction. You know, after I figured it out, I was like, oh, where his old ass said, I'm about to go give him some, 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 you know, but. Needless to say, he never came back into that store. So I guess he knew better. So I don't know. But we are raising some sensitive children. Um, and that's why kids is so... Okay, I was in school. I wasn't bullied. Well, I couldn't have been bullied. <laughs> I couldn't have been bullied because I had one fight in eighth grade that carried me all the way through high school. That was a good thing and a bad thing because it was a good thing because nobody messed with me. It was a bad thing because it was hard for me to get dudes to really like me because it was like, nah, you beat up dudes. No. So it was difficult on, you know, both sides of the spectrum. But, you know, it is what it is. But I was, I, I kids are getting bullied, but we as parents need to do better with our children. Because bullying only comes from what children see. I think that is a that is a um, behavior learned. And if you know how, if you can learn how to be a bully, you need to learn how to not to be a bully. Point blank, period. Whether it's you're a bully because you're bigger than everybody, or you're a bully because whatever reason, there really is no reason to be a bully. There's no reason to be a mean girl. I mean, it's just a bunch of hatred and, you know, it's behavior learned. Because if you see your mama popping off and you see your mama on Twitter and Facebook popping off or you hear your mama on the phone cursing all the time, I mean, you're going to pick that up. I recently, within the last two years, heard my mama say the F and the B word. And I'm grown. I've never heard her say those things, ever. So... I'm not saying that I wasn't saying it before she said it, but I had never seen her anger to the point where she used those words. So I'm not going to lie. Some of my um, vocabulary came from my peers because I never heard my mom cuss in, in the house. I never heard her cuss. The only cuss word I really remember my mom saying is damn and ass. And those words went together when she said, I'm going to whip your damn ass. <laughs> so, um, I mean, that's 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 really what it was. It, it, it really wasn't, you know, but I got a I got a mama. I got a real mama. I got one of them back in the day OG mamas. I, I don't have a young mama at all. I don't have one. I didn't grow up with my mama. My mama was 31 when she had me. So I had a grown ass mama when I when I was born. So, um. And another thing about the whole sensitivity thing, um, I think the media doesn't help much, help at all, because they have <laughs> blown a lot of stuff that we see in our daily lives, and they put it on front street and make it bigger than what it really truly is to us, so we react to it. Case in point, um, I know this is old, but the Peterson. Um, the guy that whipped his son. Us as black people, we know what whippings are. We've all gotten at least one good one in our life. Or we've seen somebody get a good ass whipping in our life. What we have to do as, I'm going to say African Americans, I'm going to say black people, us, what we have to do is we have to choose our words wisely. Why? Because the media takes it and they turn it into something that is not really what we truly meant. So their their version of what we say 
the way they interpret it is totally different from the way that we mean it. So I can say my mama beat my ass. To white folks, she abused me. That could have been whipped my ass, could have just meant my mama whipped me for some shit that I shouldn't have done. That mean that was a that was a whipping beyond my belief because I didn't know I can get whipped like that. That's basically what that is. But the media turns things around and makes it what we, you know, make it worse than what it really is. We know there's difference between getting a whipping, getting a spanking, which black people don't get, um, getting getting whooped, spanking, and beat. There's different levels to it because it all depends on your age and the circumstances. If you embarrass your mama in the stove, you getting your ass whipped. If your mama have to continue to tell you to do the same thing over and over again, you getting a whooping. If you went to school and act a complete ass, your mama going to beat your ass. Why? Because it's all about the level of everything in a black household. But in a white household, because they never had to deal with it, they, they don't understand, they will interpret it somewhere all the way to the left. So we as people, we have to really be conscious of the words that we use. So that whole little situation was ludicrous to me because not only did the media blow it up, but the NFL was doing way too much. I mean, I, I am a firm believer, do not judge until everything is said and done. Just like the whole um, Bill Cosby thing. I wasn't going to touch on this because my thing is, I wasn't there. I don't know. I don't have time to analyze it and I don't have time to figure it out. But what I do know is, like today on The View, they were trying to say that Bill Cosby should stop doing his stand-up. For what? Why he need to stop working? Hell, they done took all his endorsements, so the nigga need to work now. See, I'm sorry. He needs to work now. And why would I stop working? And why would I just go in my house and crawl into in a hole and stay, you know, secluded if I didn't do anything wrong? I have always been taught that if you've never done, if you haven't done anything wrong, do not continue to defend yourself. Some of y'all like, well, he's never come out and said anything. Well, all 20, 20 of these women already came out and half of the people in the world have already pegged him as he did it. He did it. So what's the point? It's like me going into a courtroom where all the jury's white, the judge is white, the lawyer's white, my lawyer's white, everybody in the room is white. You really think that I'm I, half the people in there, if not majority of them, already think I'm guilty. So what's the point of me even trying to defend myself? I can defend myself, but my question is, if he come out and say he didn't do it, how many of y'all will believe him? I'll wait. Point taken. So it's like, he's damned if he do and he's damned if he don't. I don't think he should stop working because all these women coming out and saying it. I'm not saying he did it. I'm not saying he, he didn't do it. What I'm saying is, do not cause issues in someone's life if you if they haven't been prosecuted, if they not have if they haven't been put to j put in jail for it, if if it's not completely true, you don't even know if it's true, but you're just going on because all these women coming out and they have similar stories. It's it's justified. I'm like, if he ain't been prosecuted and no charges are being brought to him, who am I to say you need to be sitting down somewhere? No, that's no, no, no. Go home, Steve. Go home. No, I'm not going to do that. I said the same thing about 
the Ray Rice thing. He did it. He damn for sure did it. He did, and I'm not going to justify him doing it in his situation. I think the NFL jumped the gun, and that's why he's been reinstated to play football. But now his issue is he's got to find a team that's willing to pick him up. This is my thing, and this also goes for, uh, what's his name, Sam, whatever his last name is. The guy that came out as being gay during the draft when he got picked. This is my thing. I don't care as an employer. I don't care what you do outside of your workplace. As long as your production is what I need and what I want and it is helping me, I don't care what you do outside of here. I don't care. As long as it does not have anything to do with in here, meaning as long as you're not bringing guns around here, as long as you're not doing drugs around here, as long as you ain't bringing no baby mama drama, no time foolery around here, we're good. You being gay has nothing to do with you producing on the football field. And the boy is crazy. You put him on a football field, he is crazy. He's a beast on a football field. And I feel sorry for him because because he came out and he even said that he wished he hadn't come out or he waited. He should have waited to come out. Yeah, you should have. But I understood what he was trying to do. But let's just face it, the world wasn't ready for that. And I understood what a lot of my, my male friends and family members was talking about when they said, you, you know, there's a lot of young boys looking up to these football players. That's true. But this is what I see. They can look up to these football players as what they do on the field, production on the field, who got the most receive, the most catches, how many yards they ran, you know, how many fumbles they caused, how many sacks they got. That's the stats that they need to be looking at, not who he's, who he's sleeping with, how many women he got. No, that's not what you should raise your children, point blank, period. Just like some of these little girls out here want to be Beyonce and Rihanna. Okay, them hoes got problems too. You want to you wanna be a good singer? Okay, fine. If that's the only thing you're emulating of her is her voice, okay, fine. Her work, her work ethic, that's fine. Do that's please do, but don't look at her as she does not make mistakes or him as he makes mistakes. That's my whole my whole just on that. That that's I hate when people do that and that irritates the world out of me it really does because it's pointless and it's it's wrong what i do outside of my job unless I, unless i'm killing or raping somebody you know and y'all got proof of it i don't think that should stop me from working at all they got people that did a hell of a lot worse that still play in the nfl that you know did something worse than whipping a kid or Hitting their wife. Hell, they got some of them owners that probably beat their wife or used to because their ass is old. But, and my whole thing with the Ray Rice thing is that situation happened a month before she married him. Not saying it's justified, but I'm like, I think the NFL wanted to punish him because she refused to. And that's why I think the, the whole thing um, came from. But Goodell can suck a nut as far as I'm concerned because I can't stand his ass into it. He does way too much. And he's still not allowed to come to New Orleans. Bound to get that. What else? What else? What else? What else? Oh, I don't know if you guys saw, but I posted. I, I don't see. I don't sleep at night. And I came across this show on TLC. And it says my, it says my husband's not gay. So me being a, the the inquisitor that I am. I said then I watched it because I was confused. Mind you, everybody on here white. But um it's a a show about men that are married with kids that have openly told their wives that they are attracted to men.
I wish a motherfucker would. But they justified it though. They're saying that they find men attractive. They don't want to have a sexual relationship with them, but they are they find men attractive. And they check men out. What? I'm sorry. If you have a feeling that you are the first post, if you get aroused by looking at another man and you're my husband or boyfriend, I'm going to question your ass. Matter of fact, I'm not going to question you. I could not tolerate it. I, I don't want to bad enough. I, I got to worry about the other women. And I got to worry about men too. Ain't nobody got time for that. I ain't got time for that. I'm not going to do it. Not going to deal with it. Not, 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 not going to do it. Mm -mm. Sorry. Not going to happen. Not today or tomorrow. No. Mm -mm. Can't do it. I'm sorry, y'all. Call me what you want, but I can't. Kudos to y'all. But one of the chicks was like, he, he asked her, well, if I, do you mind if I check out a, a guy? And her response was, as long as you don't mind me checking him out with you. Mm-mm. Nah. Nah, brother. You, nah. Nah. I can't. I can't say that. Mm-mm. 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 No, no, no. Then the other one, she was like, when he told her, she was very upset about it because she felt the way I did. I may have to worry about you dealing with chicks and dudes. But he was like, no, you're the only girl that I want to be with. And I'm, oh, girl, bye, I can't. I said that and I watched that. For like a good 20 minutes. And I was like, I can't. Lord. Why? I can't do it. I can't do it, Jesus. I tried. I can't. Mm -mm. I have nothing against gay people. Nothing at all. I have a gay aunt. I had a gay cousin that passed. One of my best friends is gay. I have no problems with y'all. None whatsoever. None. None whatsoever. And I understand y'all struggles and what y'all trying to do. I get it. But again, just like the media pays attention to wording, so do religious people. Very much so. So I understand you guys want to become joined together. Y'all want to come join together. I get it. I understand. And I understand the reasons behind it. And I thank you guys. If that's what something you want to do, salute. Because I don't have to answer for that. You have to answer for that, not me. I have to answer for my own situations when when that time, when Judgment Day comes. So I don't have time to be worried about yours, child. I got to worry about my own. So um, I don't have time for that. But, um. I think the main thing that most religious people or Christians or whomever is really concerned about is the word marriage because it's supposed to be between a man and a woman. If y'all, if if the word was union, it'd be something totally different. I promise y'all, if y'all like, we want to come together as a unit. We want to be a, we want to un, unite together. It'll be a totally different story. It really would, but people are so hung up on the word marriage. That's the big stigma of it, words. And that's the big thing. People are so hung up on words and wording to where it's really difficult for you to have, you know, that whole freedom of speech when you have to kind of sort of censor yourself to say what you really want to say. And that's the way society is, but 
that's the one thing that people really have an issue with is wording. And if you look at everything that's going on, everything is because of the way something someone said. Someone said it. If they said it, but if she, but everybody can say, well, she's he or she, he or she said it like this, it would have meant something totally different. We get hung up on words a lot, and it's not just women. It's everybody. It's everybody. You you know. So it's all about wording. I, I don't really. I mean, I am not here to judge you. If that's again, if that's something you want to do in your life, so be it. I don't have to answer for your your situation when judgment day comes. I have to answer for my own. I can't help you. I can't get you in. It's not a club. So, I mean, it is what it is. I, whatever. Salute again. What else going on? I said the whole thing about Nene calling Claudia a breed But... Did y'all see the report that Claudia was doing an interview and she said the only thing she can see on dark people is their eyes and teeth. So y'all better, just like y'all came for Nene, y'all better come for her, her ass too. Come for her too. All she see is eyes and teeth. Come for that ass too. All she see is light-skinned people. She can't see those offended people. Y'all right? Mm -hmm. Remember, Ricky Smiley Doc. And dope is shit. Remember that. You better remember who you work for. You might work for some white people, but them dark ones is the ones that is the ones you want to stay clear of. Thug life. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm joking. But um, I was like, wow, y'all wild. So, a couple of movies I plan on going and seeing. I want to see Selma. I've, I'm hearing a lot of good things about it. And I feel so ignorant because I thought Selma was a person and not a place. Don't judge me. I didn't know. But it looks like a really good movie. I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. I'm going on a date this weekend and we're supposed to go see The Wedding Ringer. Yeah. My first date in a long time, y'all. I'm just saying, it's hard out here. It's real hard out here. Mm -hmm. It's hard out here. And I'm up in age, so it's about that time where I need to be settling down and stuff and having kids. I'm the only one. I'm the last, I think I'm the last. I'm the last cousin in my generation that don't have kids. Now, they got some under me that got kids, but God bless them. Not, not me. Come on. It ain't me. It won't be me. But I am the last of my mom's three kids. And I don't have any kids. And they're looking at me to do it right. Meaning get married and have kids. Not have a kid. Then get married and have more kids. So I'm going to try that way. But if it don't happen that way. I mean it's the way God wanted it to happen. I think. So I'm going to see that. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a few other things I want to see. I like horror movies, but I ain't no real. I don't want to see the woman in black. I saw the first one and I was not impressed. I wasn't scared. Horror movies are getting to the point where they are predictable. And I don't, I don't like predictable movies. So, yeah. No, I don't like that. Mm -mm. Um, so... I think that's all I had to talk about today. And I will see you guys on Friday. I'm trying to get my bestie to do the best friend tag with me. I have to coordinate our um our schedules. So hopefully I can get that put out sometime this week. If not this week, hopefully next Monday. But I'm going to do the best friend tag with her. I'm going to try to do the mommy-daughter tag that I saw someone do. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try to get all those done this week. I'm going to try. Uh, I want to do the mommy-daughter tag Sunday, but the game come on. So I don't know how that's going to work. And I try. Yeah, I don't want, gotta watch as much. Both of my teams are out. The Saints and the Baltimore Ravens are out. So... Yeah. 
I'm not really pulling for anyone because the people I wanted out are out. Meaning Carolina and the Cowboys are out. So, yeah. So, um, I really think my prediction, because I was really shocked that Manning and the Broncos lost to Luck in the Colts. Shocking. I was very shocked about that situation. So, now... Well, I always thought that it was going to be a um, a Seattle Patriots Super Bowl. You know, Seattle is the is the the champs, and they got a young team. But Tom Brady is the golden boy. I really thought it. I honestly thought it was going to be um, a re a redo from last year and be Seattle and the Broncos again, but I watched that game. I was like, well, maybe not. So I think it's going to be Seattle and, and the Patriots this year. I don't I don't see Andrew Luck going into Tom Brady's house and beating him. I just don't see it. Y'all don't see it. And Green Bay going to Seattle. Whew. I don't know. I don't know y'all. I, I don't know. I think the home field advantage on both sides gonna gonna get them wins. But um, I'm gonna try to find a way to get all these videos out. I'm going to still do my um my what you watching on Saturday. That's going to come out on Saturday. And I got to add mob wise to my collection. What was I thinking? Girl, get your life together. So I got to get that put in there. I don't know what I, I totally forgot about mob wise, y'all. I really did. So I'm going to get on that. So right now, because I still haven't got my camera in, I'm still waiting on that. I actually need to go and look and check to see when I'm supposed to get that but um as of right now I'm going to be putting out a move uh, a movie mm, no no Kim Kardashian here I'm going to be putting out videos on Wednesday Friday and Saturday so just look for that and what I normally do is I normally do my videos at night like around 9 10 o'clock and I post them when I wake up in the morning or midnight. So it's usually, I, it's up before y'all wake up in, in the morning. So hopefully, you know, you guys enjoy the video so far. And once I get my, my camera, I'll do daily vlogs. So then Mondays, Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays will be vlog days. So I'll be putting something out probably every day of the week hopefully that doesn't burn me out i hope not but i'm gonna do it because i enjoy it so i'm gonna try to work it out whichever way i can and i am drinking moscato in my zebra cup my zebra glass i'm sorry so i will see you guys on Friday and like comment and subscribe to my channel and share the video go to um, my Facebook page and like my page leave a comment on that it is girl been drinking she been drinking she been drinking um, what's my page? What's my page? What's my page? What's my page? Miss Bell Love Jones on Facebook. So go like that page, please, and thank you. Follow me on Twitter. On Twitter. On Twitter. And on Twitter, my name is Miss Love Jones. Miss Love Jones, L O V E. Jones 83 and on Facebook is LUV Jones and you can also follow me on on my Instagram Instagram 
and why Instagram. That's bad. I don't know. Why. Bell Miss Love Jones. See, all of my stuff got Love Jones in it. Okay. So on Instagram is Bell underscore Miss Love Jones. L U V J O N E S. So hopefully you guys can see me on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. My Twitter um really pops during football season and during scandal and the uh, sometimes during Real Housewives, but I just send them that so confused. Oh, I need to pay attention sometimes to them because they'll have me all kind of screwed up. So again, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know how I can make these videos better, uh, what you guys want to hear me talk about. And I'm going to think of some other things to come up with to do during the week. So until next time, guys, love you, love bugs.